Hello everyone, I'm Stella from Stella's Yarn Universe. In this Amigurumi tutorial, I will show you how to crochet this little hen. You may already know my little rooster, Rudy. He's been around for almost a year now and he could really use some company. So I thought it's time to make a hen. Also, some of you requested it. So I thought it's definitely time to do that. You could use the same pattern and adapt it a little bit, but then I just realized it's it's a little different actually because I wanted her to be more chubby and, and shorter. So I made her own little pattern and yeah maybe we need some chicks and eggs now let me know in the comment section if that's something you're interested in also I have a little loop here because I use them as Easter de decoration so if you want to hang them up you can do this but you can also they can also stand so you can use them as a decoration this way as well. So without further ado, let's get started with our little hen. For this little project we need yarn in DK or light worsted weight. I'm using 100% cotton yarn and um, the exact one I'm using is paint box yarns cotton decay and for the body I'm choosing brown of course you can also um, make your hand in white I'm using the color soft fudge and then we'll also need red I believe this shade is called tulip red but I will double check for you and then yellow or orange for the beak you may want to use orange. I ran out of orange, so I'm going to use the yellow this time. And I'm not sure which exact shade this is, but I will um, write it down in the description box below for you. Then we need a 2.5 millimeter hook, which is something in between uh, B1 or C2. So if you tend to crochet quite tightly, I recommend going for a C2. But if you crochet more loosely, um, a B1 may be the right size for you. But if you're somewhere in the world where um, you have the 2.5 millimeter size, that will be perfect as well. And then we need a yarn needle. Safety eyes, if you like. These are four millimeter safety eyes. And I believe you won't be able to fit in any larger safety eyes. Um, that's probably the biggest size that can fit in the small head. But um, you could also, if you prefer, embroider the eyes just by making a French knot or something like that using black embroidery floss. That should definitely work as well. Then we need pipe cleaner for the feet which I'm using, um, I'm using this orange one again as I did for the rooster and um, yeah I'll just cut these little fibers a little shorter later on because I think they're a bit too long for the feet. Alternatively you could be using some uh, craft wire like this, this one may be too thick, this is three millimeter, um, I recommend it something with a two millimeter diameter but they come in different colors as well so you can choose um, any color you see fit and then we need some fiber fill a stitch marker and a few pins probably and scissors that i forgot <laughs> If you're using craft wire for the feet, then you may also need a small um, pair of pliers, like these ones for jewelry making. But with the pipe cleaner, that can be bent very easily just using the hands. So if you're using pipe cleaner, you won't need any um, 
any pliers. We start with the tail feathers. So we begin with the brown yarn or white if you chose white for your hen. And we start with four chains. one, two, three, and four. And then we single crochet, starting here in the second chain, one in each chain, one, two, and three. Tiny little feather here. Then we chain five, one, two, three, four, five. And now we single crochet four, starting here in the second chain, one in each chain, one, two, three, and four, second little feather done. Then next we chain six, one, two, three, four, five, six, and single crochet five, starting here in the second chain, one in each chain, one, two, three, four, and five. Next we chain seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and single crochet six. One in each chain, starting in the second, two, three, four, five, six. That's feather number four done. Next we chain six again, four, five, six, and make five single crochets starting in the second chain. One, two, three, four, and five. Next we chain five. One, two, three, four, five. And single crochet four, starting in the second chain. One, two, three, four. Now we have a six feathers, one more. So we chain four and single crochet three. One, two, three. And that's the tail feathers done. So now we can fasten off here. Here we go. So we can put these aside and start with the legs now. So the, the part of the legs that is crocheted. So we begin with a magic ring. Use your preferred magic ring method. If you want to learn this one, I can link to it in the upper right corner for you. And we start with six single crochet in the magic ring. One, two, three, 
four, five, and six. Now don't pull the magic ring too tightly because we want to fit the pipe cleaner through later on. So close it so that you can start the second round, but there should still be enough space in the middle to fit the pipe cleaner through. So I won't um, close it any further than this. The second round we start with one single crochet in the first stitch. One single crochet in the next stitch. And in the next stitch we increase. So two single crochet in here. And then we repeat these stitches. So one single crochet in the next one single crochet in the next and increase in the next stitch. So that's round two done. And here we fasten off. And now we start with the second leg. So again, magic ring. Single crochet six. Close the magic ring, but not too tightly, so that you can fit the pipe cleaner through. And in round two, we single crochet in the next two stitches. One, two, and increase in the third two single crochet in the third and then one in the next one in the next and in, in an increase in the last stitch that's leg that's leg number two done and this time we don't fasten off we chain one and in round three we join both legs together. So we start with the first leg we made and it doesn't really matter where you join but I like to join where the round starts usually. So we now single crochet one in each stitch, one in each of the of the eight stitches that this leg has. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. Now the last stitch of the round will probably loosen up when you crochet in it but you can pull it tight again afterwards. Then we single crochet one in the chain that we made and then we crochet around the other leg so eight stitches around the other leg one two three four five six 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then we finish with one single crochet in the other side of the chain that we made. So now our round has 18 stitches and the round ends here. So I put my stitch marker in there and now we have both legs connected. In round four we single crochet in the first two stitches and I all almost missed the first stitch here so be careful that may be a little small the first stitch so one in there then one in the next oops there we go and then we increase in every third stitch so two in here and we repeat this five more times one two and increase six times all together so that once we complete the round we have a stitch count of 24 so now our round has 24 stitches and in round five we simply single crochet one in each of those without any increases In round six, we increase a little further. So we single crochet in the next three stitches. And then we increase in every fourth stitch. So two single crochet in here. And we repeat this six times all together. So that a round of 24 grows to a round of 30 stitches. In the next round we don't have any increases so we just single crochet in all 30 stitches that we now have. Just one single crochet in each stitch. Now my round seven of 30 single crochet is complete and in round eight we increase a little more so we single crochet in the next four two three four and then we increase in the fifth stitch one two three, four, and increase. We repeat the series of stitches six times all together, so four more times, so that we'll have a round of 36 stitches by the end. So now our round has 36 stitches, and in the next three rounds, round nine to 11, We'll simply single crochet one in each of them. So you can pause the video here and hit play once you completed round 11 or the three rounds of 36 single crochet. Round 11 is now complete. So we've done our three rounds of 36 single crochet. And now it's time to insert and shape the feet. So secure your stitch here. Um, 
my yarn just ran out. So don't think I fastened off, off here. Don't fasten off. It just looks like this because my skein of yarn is finished. So actually, before we do the feet, we can close these little gaps that we have here. Um, if you have them as well, you can use one of these yarn ends. Um, if the middle yarn end, the one, um, um, the one that we fastened off with, if that is long enough, you can use that. But if not, you can also use one of these uh, magic ring yarn ends and thread it on your yarn needle. And just make a few stitches here. I just kind of weave through these stitches so that the gaps become smaller. And then you can weave in the yarn and to secure that. And the rest of the yarn and you can just hide inside the body with the rest of them. So now it's time for the feet. So one of these pieces of pipe cleaner, which is about 20 centimeter, eight inches long, should be enough. Let's see how I get on with this. I used this for something else before, so it's not in perfect condition, but it should be fine. So fold it or bend it in the center so that you have two um, sides with the same length. And then we just insert these through the magic rings that we made here at the same time, ideally. So pop one through. Have the yarn ends in the way here. So get them out of the way if they're blocking the opening here. There we go. Then just pull these through carefully. Oh no, I get another yarn end on the other side. I'm gonna cut that up later. So pull this through. Any yarn ends are coming out. Well, I don't want to cut this one too short. So this short one here, I'm going to cut. But this one I just insert back in with my needle. There we go. So now we can shape the feet. I'm just gonna cheat by looking at the little cockerel. So now, depending on how long you want the legs, you you bend 
both actually this is forward so where our round ends now this is going to be the back where the tail goes and this is where the head goes so I'm going to start with folding this forward at even less than a centimeter and then I just try to make these three kind of toes so now I'm bending it backwards Let's see at about one centimeter and you can also twist the little toe that you just made to secure it then I'm making this little back um, toe, <laughs> I don't know, the little toe that's pointing toward the back. So I'm folding it forward again and twisting it. Then I make the second forward pointing toe. So bending this at the same length as the other forward pointing one. Twist. And then the last one. Bend that one back. And twist. So that was just about enough. And later, like I did with the rooster, I'm going to cut these fibers short because now they are a little bit too fluffy. So let me show you what I did here with this leg. So at about one centimeter length, I bend the pipe cleaner backward. So now it's pointing toward the back and I have a little toe shaped here in the front and I twist that once or twice to secure it. Now I'm making this little backward pointing toe. So that one is going to be shorter than the forward pointing one. So that's maybe only about a half a centimeter. So I bend the pipe cleaner forward and again twist it like once or twice to secure it. Now I'm making the second of the forward pointing toes. So I'm bending the wire Bring the pipe cleaner back again and twist the toe. And now there for the third forward pointing toe, I twist and I bend this around once like this and twist. So now we have two very fluffy looking feet, but we will fix that. Maybe I'll just do that right away. <laughs> now you can try and see if the hen can stand. So that's a good sign. If it can't stand now, then it definitely won't stand later when it's more heavy, filled with fiber fails. So then you may need to make this um, backward painting little toe, for lack of the correct term. Um, you can make that a bit longer, maybe same length as the forward pointing toes. Then it will, should be able to balance the body weight better. So now I'm just cutting these fibers a bit shorter. You can leave this until the end, but I'd like to get that done now. Then I can look at the feet and 
um, might be bothered <laughs> by this. <laughs> So all around I just cut these little fibers a bit shorter. So now the feet had a little trim. And next we we'll start filling the body. And from here we'll start dividing it into front and back. So we need another stitch marker. Now we add some fiber fill. We can add more later, so don't worry about making it super full now. And now we divide the body this way so that we have a part here for the head and a part here for the tail. So the part for the head we'll have 21 stitches and the part for the tail 15 and we continue with the tail first so we just need to fold this round together and then figure out where to divide so let's see how many we have here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So almost fifteen. So if we move it this way, it may be fine. Let's see. So you can connect two stitches and Pin them together with a stitch marker and now we can count again. So this part should have 15 stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six. I don't count these that have the stitch marker in them now. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. That's right. And then just to double check the other side should have 21 and this time we count the ones that have stitch mark the stitch marker in them so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 that's perfect so now we can continue with pushing the tail So in the next round, we simply single crochet in all 15 stitches. So you can squeeze the body together to um, more easily insert your hook in the stitches. Now the next single crochet goes in here, so I'll just turn the hand around and now insert my hook in the first stitch here that doesn't have the stitch marker in. And that's the seventh, and then just complete the round, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and now I need to join a new skein. Uh, 
and that's the round complete. Anytime you feel it's necessary, you can add more fiber fill. But remember that the opening for the neck and head is still open, so we can always add more through there. And then in the next round, we will attach the tail feathers. So the way we do this is we just crochet them on together with the usual stitches and this um, fourth tail feather here in the center, this should go here where the stitch marker is that separates the um, two sides so that the two small tail feathers are going to be here in the back and we will crochet them on with 14 stitches so that only the last stitch here um, uh, won't have a tail feather attached if you know what I mean. So we put this um, row of tail feathers on with the right side facing down, wrong side facing up so that it's kind of like sewing where we have the right sides facing we kind of sew these parts together by crocheting one round and then they will be attached the right way they will be pointing um yeah point, pointing upward later on so ideally you have the first stitch of the round now in the very back if you don't then maybe undo a few stitches and make the beginning of the round be here in the very end. So the very back of the tail. This would be ideal. That makes it much easier for this next part. So we just put these tail feathers on and with the first stitch we already begin crocheting them on. So we go here in this first um, first gap here near the side of the base chain for the tail feathers. Actually it's not even a base chain because we crochet them just one after the other. So each, each feather you will crochet on with two stitches. Maybe that's a better way of explaining it. So this first little tail feather here, we will make one single crochet and two single crochet and then move on to the next. So in this first little gap that you can see here, that one I slip on my hook And now I go through the next stitch of the round here and I single crochet so that they will be crocheted together. And then I find the next gap which is here. So go through that one, the next gap of the base of the tail feathers here and go through the next stitch of the round. So now you have both on your hook, the base of the tail feather and the next stitch of the round and we single crochet, so pull the loop through both, single crochet and that part is attached now. So now we made two single crochet and the first little tail feather here is attached. So with the next two single crochet, we'll attach the next little tail feather. So I find the next little gap here in the base of the tail feathers and insert my hook in the next stitch of the round. Just 
Just making sure I don't work any of the fiber fill in. And single crochet. Then I find the next little gap here, which is this one there. And go through the next stitch of the round. And single crochet. So now we have the second tail feather crocheted on. Now we go through the next gap and the next stitch. And the next gap. And the next stitch, I'm just trying not to work in the fiber fill. There we go. So now the next tail feather is crocheted on. So later it will look like this. Now we have this center tail feather here and that's why ideally we now reach this point here at the front side of the tail. If your if your work is a little bit shifted toward the right, that would even be better, but it's almost in the center, so I'm just going with it. So now I go through this little gap here and through the next stitch here. And single crochet and through the next gap in the base of the feathers and the next stitch of the round. So that's most of the feathers crocheted on. So now we just continue this until the end of the round. Now you can check where the, the center feather is gone. Mine is almost centered, so for me that's centered enough. But nature is never perfect, so I'm going with it. So once you attached all the tail feathers, you should only have one stitch left because we have seven tail feathers and we attach each with two single crochet. And around has 15 stitches. So this here is the last one. So this one you may need to pull tight after crocheting in it. So now we just have the last stitch of our round left. All the feathers are attached and we just finished, finished the round with a single crochet in there. And that's done. So now our round is complete. And our little hen has some little tail feathers. Now we can get these yarn ends out of the way. The yarn ends that can come with the tail feathers. I just use them as, as um, stuffing and just push them in.
And now, in the next round, we start decreasing. So we single crochet in the next stitch. And then we decrease. So for now we can hold the tail feathers out of the way so that we can see our stitches and we repeat this five times. So single crochet one like I did just now and decrease. And we repeat this five times all together. So three more times. One single crochet. and decrease one single crochet and decrease and once more one single crochet and decrease so now our round has 10 stitches and in the next round, oops, we'll simply single crochet one in each of them. One, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Now in the next round, we close the round. Well, we don't actually close it just yet. First we decrease, we decrease five times, five times in a row. That's one. Don't worry about filling the tail because you can always do it from here, from the other opening. That's two. So here it helps squishing the tail together to make these decreases, although this side is a bit tricky, I find. There we go, just take your time. It's three. four and one more and that's five so our round of ten is now reduced to five and here we can fasten off and close the round hey hey this is future Stella popping in real quick just to say leave the yarn and longer here also we don't need this stitch marker anymore So now we thread the yarn end on our needle here and we just insert it through, insert it in the front loops of all five stitches. One, two, just pull the yarn and through all five front loops, three, four 
and five. Then we pull it tight. And now we stitch through the center of the last round. Through somewhere where we want to weave in the yarn and to secure it. Also now we can fold up these tail feathers so that they point in the right direction, which is upward. And now, actually I'm gonna edit the video so that you leave a longer end here, because now we can use this very same end to stitch them to the tail. So I'll just go through here now. And stitch the tail feathers down. So I just go through the first little tail feather here. Make a little stitch trying to follow the stitch pattern so that it won't be too obvious. Then I just stitch somewhere through the tail and through the next tail feather and stitch down following the single crochet stitch pattern and again stitch somewhere through the tail just catching a loop or so to stitch it down and then through the next tail feather stitch it to the tail And through the center tail feather here. So I'm attaching them at the center so that the, the tips are kind of loose here. But this just ensures they point in the right direction and they're not, not all over the place. And this way we just go around until they're all stitched down. And that's it. Once you've done that, you can weave in the remaining yarn end. So now the little tail is done. And next, we'll continue with the neck and head. So we join the yarn here at the beginning of this larger round of 21 stitches and we leave the yarn and quite long here because later we want to use it to close this little gap that will form here in between the front and back part. So I just pull a little loop out here. If you want to make it more secure you can make a little loop with a slip knot and pull that one through and then in this round we just single crochet one in each stitch. That's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, 
13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and the last stitch goes here and here where we joined the yarn just now. Oops. <laughs> so we turn our hand around and go in that stitch and single crochet there. And we can tighten this one again if necessary. And this is the last stitch, so here I'll just place my stitch marker. Before we continue, we just need to make sure that this long yarn end that we left peeks out here at the gap where we actually need it later. So I'll just pull that through here so that it stays where we want it to be. And now in the next round, we start decreasing. So we single crochet in the next five stitches. Now the first one is a little tricky here. One, two, three, four, five, and decrease. And we repeat this three times all together. So two more times. One, two, three, four, five, and decrease, and once more, one, two, three, four, five, and decrease. And that's the round complete. So now we have 18 stitches. So now we keep adding fiber fill as we go. And in the next round we keep decreasing this time we single crochet in the next four stitches. One, two, three, four, and then we decrease. And one, two, three, four, and decrease, and once more. One, two, three, four, and decrease. So now our round has 15 stitches and we keep decreasing. So in the next round we start with three single crochet. One, 
two, three, and decrease. And once again, we do this two more times. So one, two, three, and decrease. And once more, one, two, three, and decrease. So now our round has 12 stitches. I'll add more fiber fill now before I continue. In the next round, we keep decreasing. So now we single crochet in the next two stitches. And then we decrease. And we repeat this three times all together again. Two single crochet and a decrease and two single crochet and a decrease. There we go. So now our round has nine stitches. And in the next round, we single crochet in all nine stitches. One, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, and nine. So now it's important that we have at the end of the round here at the center back of the neck. So if you need to add more stitches, in order for that to happen, then do so now. Even though my round is complete now, my, my round of nine single crochet, I single crochet one more. Let's see, I'm just thinking one or two. One is enough for me, I think. Now I'm quite at the center of the back. And here we can fasten off.
And now it's time to add the safety eyes. Or embroider the eyes if you prefer. So here on top, we're still gonna add the um, comb. So the safety eyes will probably go somewhere here. Just try it out to see how it looks. From all sides. I think that's a good placement. So I start with one. Now this part may be a little tricky. Getting the eye secured. <laughs> so you may need to you may need to have the safety eye point outward. And maybe you need to fold this last round down a bit so that you can put this back end on. And push it on as firmly as you can. That's one side done. Now the other side. There we go. That's it. So now you can add a tiny bit more fiber fill to the head. So we should make really little balls to fit that in here. And I mean, use my scissors to carefully push that in actually. A little more. And that should be enough. Now we join the red yarn to crochet the comb and at the same time close the head. So we insert our hook in the first stitch of the round here the new first stitch because we may have extended around here so that the end of the round is at the back of the head and now we insert our hook in both last stitches here in the back and here is where we join the red yarn so we pull the red loop out um, hold this brown yarn and in place. We um, do this with the middle finger because the last stitch there might loosen up a bit. Then we chain two and then we move on to the next two stitches. So the next stitch here and the next stitch on the opposite side. We crochet both together single crochet, so we pick up the yarn, pull it through both stitches and complete the single crochet. Now we chain two and move on to the next two stitches, the next one here and on the opposite side, 
single crochet these two together. Then we chain two again. And with the next two stitches, one next one on this side and the next one on the other side, the opposite one, single crochet both together. And there is one stitch of the round left, stitch number nine in the front, but that's basically covered now by the red yarn, so we don't need to worry about that. So don't fasten off here because hands also have a little wattle that will crochet now. So we chain five, one, two, three, four, five, and now in the third stitch, in the third chain from our hook, we half double crochet one. So one, two, three in here and yarn over and half double crochet. Now in the next chain, we single crochet and in the last chain here we slip stitch slip <laughs> and that's it that's going to be the one on this side i believe we just repeat this for the other side so we chain for five one two three four five now half double crochet in the third chain so we yarn over and half double crochet. Don't split your yarn like I did. There we go. Then in the next chain, we single crochet. And in the next chain, we slip stitch and now we fasten off with a long enough yarn and to attach the bottle later and weave in the yarn end. Before we crochet the beak and the wings we can actually attach the wattle and weave in the yarn ends to have everything ready for the next steps. So it's just gonna go here so that we have one wattle on each side. So I'll just go here through this, this these two stitches again. And We don't need to stitch down the wattle because we can do this later when we attach the beak because it's going to go on top of it. So part of the wattle is actually not the wattle but the red face of the hen. Like sometimes they're like I think they are red, red around the eyes, and so this one's this one's just red here <laughs> in front of the eyes. So now we can just make a few stitches to weave in this end, yarn in. And if you want to secure it further, you can stitch through to somewhere in the body or actually you can stitch through to the side because later we'll attach the wings here and this way any contrast color yarn ends will be covered and won't be visible. 
so you can stitch it through here and cut it short and anyway this may disappear inside the body now but it will be covered by the wing anyway so then we have another red yarn end here and a brown one so I'll just weave those in the same way so now we just have this long yarn end here left to close the gap on the back here So we just close this with a few stitches and then make sure to weave the, the end in thoroughly so that everything is nicely secured. So now that's, that everything's nice and tidy, we can go ahead and crochet the beak. So grab your orange or yellow yarn, or you could also use the same color, brown. Um, then we make a little slip knot to make a loop, and just make sure you have the yarn end long enough to properly attach the beak. And then we chain two and all we do is make one slip stitch in the second chain here. And that's it. <laughs> so again, fasten off with a long enough yarn end. Pull that through. And then we can attach the beak. So start with one side. And I'll attach it um, in alignment with the eyes. So same height and on the wattle so this way we can attach the wattle also so I'll just stitch through the wattle here at eye height and then stitch through the body to the side that's one side done how to secure this I'll show you later. Let's first do the other side. So now we'll thread the other side on our yarn needle and just make sure everything's nice and symmetric. You can hold on to this yarn and that's coming out here at, at the side of the body and have a look where the other side of the beak should go. So again, I stitch through more or less the center of the wattle at eye height. Just go through there and then through the body and through the face, just almost under the eye, but more in front of it. And then I just stitch through to the side of the body. And let's see if that's in the right position. It's looking good with this side. It's a bit visible here, so I'll stitch through in another place, more toward the front. 
So that's something you may be need to experiment with. So I don't stitch through here, but through here instead and see how that goes. And that's better. So now the yellow yarn here is kind of covered by the wattle. And the beak is nicely centered about at eye level. Looking good from both sides, if that's the case. We can secure it and now you can either weave in the yarn edge around here because it will be covered. I think that's probably the best thing to do. And we can all even make a little knot because it will all be covered by the wings. So I'll just make a few stitches just here on the side where I'm sure that it will be covered by the wing. And you can also make a knot by going through there. And really securing this. And then you can cut it short. This will all be hidden, so that should be fine, this length. And repeat on the other side. So now all that's left are the wings. For the wings I'm using brown again. So we start with a slip knot and then we chain three and single crochet two starting in the second chain. One in each chain, one and two and then we chain one and turn. Next we increase in both stitches. So two single crochet in here and two single crochet in the next. And chain and turn. Now we single crochet, oh sorry, we increase in the first stitch single crochet in the next two and increase in the last stitch. Chain one and turn. Then we single crochet in all six stitches. One, two, three, four, Five and six, chain one and turn. Next we single crochet in the first stitch. Then we skip the next stitch and single crochet in the next two. And skip the next stitch and single crochet in the last stitch. Oops, that's it, chain one and turn, single crochet in all four stitches, one, two, three, four, chain one and turn, And then we skip the first stitch, single crochet in the second, skip the next stitch and single crochet in the last stitch here. And don't fasten off now because now we crochet all around the wing. 
So we start in the same stitch that we just crocheted in. We make one more single crochet and then we single crochet one in the side of each row. So the next one goes in here. That's for two rows, three rows, four rows, five rows, and six. Then we single crochet in the other side of the base chain here, one in each, one for each base chain, and then up the other side, so the next single crochet goes in the same stitch here, or it can actually go here in this little gap there, one, two, three, four, five, and six. So now we just leave a long end for sewing before we fasten off. And we make a little invisible decrease. It's actually more like adding an extra stitch. So you just cover this part to make it look nice and neat and like another stitch. So we go here under the first stitch of this round, pull it through, and then we go through in between the front and back loop of the last single crochet that we crocheted. And pull that tight and now we have a nice neat looking round. So this part where we where the round started and ended, this is the front of the wing. So that's gonna go on here like so. So you can first crochet the other wing or attach this already. I'm just going to tell you first where to start, uh, where to go back to to make the second wing. So whichever minute I'm going to put here, I'll also put a clickable link to all the different body parts in the description box below. In the um, so those blue timestamps, if you click on those, it will just lead you to the part that you need. So go back to that to make the second wing and then we'll crochet them on and um, sew them on, sorry. So here I'm using my pins to make sure they're positioned in the way I want them to be. I think two pins are enough. And then this yarn end that we started with, that can actually be hidden inside. If it's too long, you can shorten it. If it all fits in there, I fit it all in there. Anyway, I like my hand to be nice and chubby, so those wings will make it look even more chubby this way. And then we'll just crochet the wing on all around. You can leave the, the end bit here if you prefer, but I think I'll just crochet on all around. So the first stitch goes through the body and I try to make sure to be as close to the wing or just under the wing if possible to make it less obvious. And I just make sure that each single crochet stitch gets one um, stitch attached to the body and just trying to only make small stitches through the body and like I said close to the wing or under the wing 
to hide them as best as possible. Always one through the wing, so this pin can go, and one through the body. My recording got cut off before finishing this wing, but um, I'll show you how I finished it with this wing. Just, um, yeah, after you've done the first, um, pin the second one in place and make sure that it's in the same position in the way you want it to be before you start sewing it on. And I'll let you do the first bit alone since I've already shown you how I'm doing this with the first one and we'll just finish it together then. So now I almost finished sewing on the second wing. Two more stitches. One through here. There we go. one through here and now I just stitch through somewhere where I can weave in the yarn end. And then we just weave it in following the stitch pattern. <laughs> and once you feel it's properly secured, you can just cut it off short and that's our little hand done.
Rudy the rooster is over the moon to have company now. <laughs> so uh, if you haven't made him yet, check out the tutorial for him. I'll link to this um, in the end of this video so that you can go ahead and make him if you like. And yeah, then I guess we need some chicks and maybe some eggs. So that's something for a future project. I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial. If you did, um, feel free to give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications so that you don't miss any of my future Amigurumi tutorials. Thank you so much for crushing along with me. Happy creating. Bye.